Hello, this is Ken Sisk and welcome back to Wood, Stone and Steel. There are many ways you can cut a tree to produce timber. You can rift saw, you can flat saw, but quarter sawing is the best way to produce the most stable product. And it looks good. We want to share a few bonus clips from our Jack Badger series where Austin and Dan from the Quarter Sawn Oak Company walk us through their timber fabrication process. This footage gives you a closer look at what they do and a few good stories along the way. Uh, yeah, so we, we had this, had a friend of ours, an engineer, built this rig for us. So basically what you've got is, is two large chainsaw engines. There's a large Husqvarna 120cc engine here. And on the far side of the bar, there's a, there's a, a 70 or 80cc um, still motor. And what they do is they work on the same bar, pulling the chain around in one direction. Now, most people think that's kind of counterintuitive, like because one motor will fight against the other. Right. And that's indeed it's true when it's not actually engaged in a log because one's trying to rev faster than the other. But as soon as it hits a log and that friction kicks in, they're both working together to, to get up to like a, a maximum velocity or maximum right, for speed. The, for the machine itself. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. It does work extremely well. So how do you link the... Is it a two-man operation? It is a two-man. Right, we'll show okay. you in a minute. We'll, Sorry, we, we, will, we will get it fired <laughs> up. It is. It is. It's, I'm just uh, <laughs> Yeah, it gets quite noisy, chaps. But yeah, we'll, yeah. At some point, you want us to fire it up and show you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, you're going to start right in the middle because you got a quarter saw this thing. Well, we're not. We're not. Right? We, 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 what we'll do is we'll just run the saw down this to show you how it works. But we haven't got the facility at the minute to actually quarter yeah, the entire thing. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but you're going to just we'll, we'll cut, show us where yeah, it comes down the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we're we're talking about earlier how you actually get the heavy tree in here. Yeah, we have to use a large telehandler machine. Yeah, yeah. But how did I mean? How did you neg negotiate it in there? Because we got this rack yeah. above it. So what, what what we do is is this unbolts. Okay, yeah. And, and we lift that off with the eyes there, with the forklift. Okay. And then using large chains that you can see. Yeah, I can see the chain side here. here right? Yeah. We put that around the tree and, and we lower it in and on, onto these large trestles yeah, here. You put this back on. That goes back on because that braces the whole frame together. Oh, it's a brace frame. Yeah, right. yeah. To see, otherwise, it kind of it, it rattles and gotcha. shakes a bit anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, it's, it's a fair thing. All right. So we, we actually developed this to to slab a massive Irish log that we got in a few years ago. And I can show you some pictures of that. Well, I can show you the log itself. It's over here. I don't know whether you over want to here? have a quick yeah. look at that. Okay. Yeah. So this? This this log here, yeah. Oh, my Lord. This side look at the bark on this. Pretty special, isn't it? This is uh, Irish oak? This, this, is, this is an Irish log that we got. Uh, our agent rang me up one day and said, Austin, a, I'm sending some cedar Lebanon over to some guys in Northern Ireland. They've got a Winfeld um, burr oak that they, they'd like to send back. So are you interested? I said, well, how big is it? He said, it's about, it's about four foot six, something like that, they tell me. Bear in mind, my agent had set eyes on it. I had set eyes on it. Dan had set eyes on it. So anyway, this thing comes back over. I said, well, I can't cut it because it's too big. And the sort of tree it is, if you if you look, gaze the end down here, it's ideal for tabletops, you know, big oh, natural yeah, edge yeah. tabletops. So anyway, a rag up a friend of mine has got a big vertical band mill about 20 miles away from here, a guy I know very well. And he said, yeah, we can cut it for you, Austin. It's right at the end of our limit at 4.6. Um, just give us a day's notice and, and we'll, we'll, we'll accommodate you. So anyway, this, the guy in the wagon said, we're going to be with you in a day or so. So I rang up my friend in the sawmill and uh, duly this thing arrived. At 8 o'clock in the morning it arrived, I get the guy that owns the sawmill going, Austin, this tree's arrived. It's a lot bigger than you said it was. We can't even get it off the lorry. <laughs> so I said, how big is it? He said, well, it's got to be pushing six foot across the biggest oh diameter. Gosh. So uh, we panicked. So I was rigging the agent up going, well, we can't get off the lorry. What are we going to do? So we've got a very cross lorry driver and a massive log on, the, on, on, this, on this wagon. So we eventually rang around. We couldn't find anyone we saw that had caught it, apart from maybe a guy uh, down in Lincolnshire. And so I rang him up. 
and he said, well, send it down uh, and I'll have a look at it for you. So I sent it down to him and he says, it's bigger than you said it was, Austin. <laughs> I can't cut it, but I've taken it off the lorry for you. Um, so, um, you know, it can sit here until you can work out what to do with it. So that was in is it 2019, wasn't it, Dan? Yeah, yeah. Back in the 2019. So five years ago. Yeah, just before the COVID kicked in. And then COVID kicked in, so it languished in the yard uh, in, 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 in Lincolnshire. Lincolnshire for a while. <laughs> and then this friend of mine who got an engineering company in Sheffield, we had a chat about how we could possibly build a machine to slab it. And and this and this was uh, designed and built during COVID because he, you know, those slack periods during COVID when they allowed you to go back to work, yeah. he, his lads came in and, and, and they built this for us based on the twin engine saw so we had uh, we had this brought up by a friend of ours with some large basically earth moving equipment and they basically just dropped it on the floor in the barn here and we built the saw over the top of the logs and then slabbed it to what you can see now it's a well-traveled log it is <laughs> it cost a fortune yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. take a look from this side the, the Irish lads were very clever they've gone yeah, four foot six. Anyone could call four foot six, but yeah. six foot hard. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, it's actually kind of an egg shaped tree. So we, we, we cut it through the narrow diameter because the narrow is six because tabletops are six foot six wide. Not many people have space for that. All right. So now this has been drying for the last five years then? Pretty much four years, four yeah. Years. After we got yeah. it cut on All right. Because yeah. you had a little yeah, time yeah, we frame. Had the hiatus. Time we figured out how to yeah, cut yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, well, it was traveling its way around the country. Yeah. All right. So yeah. it looks like it's about four inches thick. Those slabs are four inch, yeah. We we counted the annual rings on it. The tree is 350 years old. 350 year old tree. 350 years old. You know, this is going to be highly sought after as a result of this being on tape. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's probably going right. to get even more well traveled. Oh, It'll go to America, right, I yeah. imagine. <laughs> because for anyone to find something like this, it's very difficult to get. It, 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 it's very difficult to get, particularly as a In solid fact. tree, because they, they're quite, you, big, big trees of that age are quite hollow at the middle. So they go rotten. Um, whereas this one has got the odd patch of, uh, of, 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 of denaturing, but it's only a small patch. Now you call this like a, a burl oak? It's a burl, yeah. It's got big patches of burr in it, or burl, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. more yeah. irregular on its That's bark, right. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big knobbly thing, basically. Yeah. I've seen people use the burl, the, the bottom of the tree. Where, you know, where oh, yeah, the root ball, the yeah. I mean, it looks beautiful. Absolutely, yeah. Walnuts particularly cut like that, didn't it? Wow. So this, this was wind damaged in, in, in Northern Ireland. So yeah, each board would be very heavy. It was four inches board. There's a, there's a, it came in two sections of ten foot long, so it's a twenty foot tree, uh, and each piece is about six ton in weight. So you're twelve ton tree. So the the actual smaller piece is just down the down the other side of it. Those are cut into two and a half inch thick boards. Now they've been dry, and they are they are selling those. So we sold quite a few of those. Um, we haven't got mad advertising, have we, done? But, no. you know, it's a case of, uh, you know, first come, first serve, really. You can only sell it once as well, eh? That's it, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how long was it, you said? 12 feet? Well, the, the, tree, the tree was 20 feet long when it fell over. Right. Um, and then these uh, are we, two 12 or two 10, 10 foot lengths, so, yeah. It had to be cut to move it, you know. Right. Six ton logs, a big chunk of wood in it, so. That's 12,000 pounds for the viewers that don't know what a ton is. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what's it in pounds? A thousand kilograms, but what's it in pounds? Uh, 17. It it's a metric ton also. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. So they're all about 2,000 pounds. Very heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what you've got is a is a V twin Honda engine that drives um, drives that pulley over there. So what happens is I'll just take this guard off if you like, so you can so you can see what we're, what we're looking at. Yeah, come around, take a look on the inside here. Yeah. So what you what you have is the Honda V twin engine drives this pulley that drives that wheel over there. And there's that turns out wheel, this saw blade rotates, you've got a band of steel with teeth on it, and it goes that way, it cuts that way, constantly cutting that way. So what we do with this, is this machine travels up and down this track, it, and it can also lift up and down as well to, 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 to cut whatever thickness board you're wanting to, 
wanting to cut. So which is generally with this sort of timber, either 27 millimetres thick, which is an inch and an eighth, if you like. Right. Or we cut it 15 mil, which is five eighths for panelling. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll, Dan will get it fired up, you mate. Is this a is this a manual a manual push? Yeah, yeah. It is push. absolutely. We, obviously, with save with, you some with, money with on the gym. saws and with posher saws, you can get them so they they, they actually they, they track themselves. But because we're watching every board that we're taking off, um, we're quite happy to run it like this. Um, so what we have is is a quarter of a tree. So. Um, a tree cut into four pieces with 90 degree surfaces and then we mount them on jigs which set the angle of the tree to 45 degrees so what we're trying to do is split the medullary ray as close to um close to close to a, a right angle to the annual rings as we can um in the old days they used to rive paneling work out of out of out of logs so they basically take a wedge and they split it down the medullary ray so you end up with cuts that's like fingers of a clock now obviously you can't do that with a bandsaw because you, turning a tree like this on a saw is very very difficult so this is what they call true quarter sawing as opposed to riving it's actually using a saw so we what we're trying to achieve is the annual rings being as close to 90 degrees to the flat surface as possible we'll, we'll try and find a piece where we can show you that as well um and then that splits the your ring gives you the figure and, and also the stability um, so we had these jigs made again by an engineering friend of mine uh, many years ago actually uh, so I had them made when well, I used to just to cut the timber for my own workshops really um, so yeah so we th this is set up really to show you cutting a probably a 10 inch wide quarter sawn board you can see the medullary figuring on that board if you look on the surface of it and there's some boards down here oh, that have come that. off the top beautiful isn't come, it if you come in here yeah. you'll be able to see all yeah. Dory rays yeah. working their way through. They change colour as well when, when it dries. That's right. This they is, do, yeah. this is, they, they're a certain sort of like a dark, almost a wet looking. Well, they are wet, I suppose. Yeah, it's yeah, a wet yeah. colour. Yeah. And then as they dry out, they get this, they go much, much silvery, uh, more silvery. And yeah. then our, our colouring pro process actually seems to target them and send them really dark, which when you look in historic buildings, which is where That's why they come out the like roots of our. Stripe exactly, yeah. It kind yeah. Of, they really pop. That is amazing. Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this closer look onto how quarter sawn oak is made before it becomes part of the Jack Badger product. If you'd like to see the full story, you can check out our Jack Badger series right here. Or you can check out this other video right here. Either way, see you soon.